Well, everyone, it's time for us to go and take a look at the M1 MacBook Pro and see if this particular MacBook is still worth buying in 2026. Now, here's the thing about these MacBooks. Apple did an amazing job with these particular devices, and I will tell you, if you're planning on going through and buying an M1 MacBook Pro, these things are still very good options for the most part, and I would highly recommend people to go and pick them up. Now, if you're on a budget, these are the best ones I'd probably recommend, but keep in mind, if you're not on a budget, these are also still good options, but I would recommend buying one of the 14-inch models. Now, those ones might be a little bit better. Now, when we take a look at the outside and the exterior of the M1 MacBook Pro, Keep in mind, these things still look pretty good. They came in a 13 inch model, so you're still getting a pretty good display on this thing, which is still nice to have. It still feels very good. You know, you are only getting two USB type C ports on the side, which might be enough for a lot of people, but that can be maybe a little bit of an annoyance for some people as well. But otherwise, I think this panel still looks pretty good for the most part. Also, when you're talking about kind of Mac OS and kind of the software updates and everything like that, this MacBook is still supported with software, so that's a really nice thing. You're also still able to get a full-size keyboard. These are not the butterfly keyboards that we had before. These are the new updated ones that are significantly better. They still have a touch bar though, which some people might find annoying. Right, if you're gonna go through and get a MacBook, getting one with like a touch bar can be slightly annoying for some people, and that could be one of those things to keep in mind there as well. Now, is it the biggest deal in the world? I'm not too sure, but it is one of those smaller annoyances that you might run into. But some people actually like it, so that could be another thing. Now, it is still supported with macOS, like I mentioned. I did install macOS 26 on mine, and I felt like it's good. It's definitely not as stable as it used to be on the original software when it initially came out back in 2020, but I still think it's, you know, as a, you know, a long ways to go on macOS 26, and it probably is going to get slightly better throughout the next coming, like, years or so. So that might be another one of those things to keep in mind there as well. Now, when it comes down to its battery life, this was also another massive advantage for these MacBooks. The battery life inside of the M1 MacBook Pro was so good. I am in love with this MacBook's battery life. It still is very good. The fans very rarely ever kick on. And that's the thing I loved about these MacBooks. They were just so stable and so good that even like almost six years later, these MacBooks still are giving us a really good experience from that particular perspective as well. And I think that's another one of those really important things to keep in mind there as well. Now, another thing. When it kind of comes down to the portability, these MacBooks are very portable as well. And since they're 13 inch models, they're very small, but they still bring so much power, which is awesome. But there are a couple of cons with this particular MacBook in this year. I kind of already hit on it, but the design is a little bit outdated. You know, when we're talking about kind of how current generation MacBooks look and what they're giving you, most of them are giving us 120 hertz displays and, you know, the lack of a touch bar, things like that. That is kind of one of the caveats here for the most part. And if you're comparing it to like the, you know, new MacBook Pros with 14 inch displays, those ones are giving us additional ports, an HDMI port and a SD card slot which can be another really nice thing going on for this. You're also only tapped out, I believe at like 16 gigs of RAM, but most of the models came out with eight gigs. So if you're getting a used one, which is the only option to get, there's not like a plethora of, you know, customization options you have here. So that could be another one of those things. But all in all, I think getting an M1 MacBook Pro is still a very good option. If you have one of those older Intel style ones, these ones still have so much power inside of them. They are still very, very good. And you would be surprised by how great of a performing Mac you can get in such a small size like this one. So from that side, that basically covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, not me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, till then.